for God's Word. Pastor Franklin, the resident pastor of Kodesh Family Church Atlanta, comes your way with this refreshing and inspiring word that will motivate you to do your best for God. Join Pastor Franklin now as he ministers the Word of God. Thank you for the chance to be here. Help us as we have gathered that we'll be blessed. For nobody comes into your presence and leaves the same. May the preaching be easy. May it be easy to understand. Let there be an increase in angelic activity, Lord. May there be answers to prayers. May eyes open. May there be revelations. May you bring to mind things that we are missing, Lord. And touch us. Let there be a tangible effect of our being in your presence this day. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. We've been talking about I shall not want... And I said this week I'll come and finish what I was talking about last week. I was telling you about some prophetic ways that God will take care of you. Amen. Amen. And we talked about the first one is that God will take care of you through his church. Because that is what the church is designed for. There is a connection that you need and somebody in the church has it. That is why you need to Connect to people when you come to church. God sets the lonely in families. So when you are in church, you need to be able to connect to people. Just relax your privacy laws a little. <laughs> and connect to people. And network. Because somebody knows what you don't know. Or knows another person who knows another. That has a key to what you need. Amen. And often, Blessings come that way. Jobs come like that. You know, and things that you are struggling with, somebody may have gone through already. Amen. Amen. We also talked about um, the fact that God will help you through marriage. And it is important that when you are married, you should be praying for your spouse to succeed. Amen. Not just insulting them in your head but actually pray for them to succeed for 20 years Genesis 25 25 verse 21 for 20 years Isaac and Rebecca had been trying to have a child Rebecca had been I'm sure she was praying to God but it wasn't working but Bible says that and Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because he was barren. And the Lord was entreated of him. And Rebekah, his wife, conceived. So she had been praying, probably fasting, doing her own things, dealing with God. But it did not work until the husband prayed for her. So then maybe something your spouse is missing. That is missing because you are not adding that to your prayer life. Amen. There may be something that is due you, but will only come from your spouse interceding for you. And when you don't intercede or pray for your spouse, that blessing also doesn't come to you. Because when Isaac prayed, guess what? She gave birth to sons who became his children. Is inheritance, no, it's a um, legacy, or they continued his name. But for 20 years, he didn't have children because he didn't pray for the wife. Amen. So God may want to give you something, but you're not praying for your wife, or you're not praying for your husband, and that thing is missing in your life. Amen. We also talked about the fact that God will bless you by traveling. Or moving. Sometimes you just need to travel. Abraham traveled when there was famine. Joseph went to Egypt before he entered into the blessing of becoming a prime minister. 
Ruth had to travel from Moab to Bethlehem before she married Boaz. Amen. So sometimes you need to move because blessings are geographical. You need to perceive whether God wants you to move or not. And I was explaining that sometimes it may not be traveling per se. It may be changing jobs. If you need a job for the same job, like you said, for five years, you are not promoting it. And the Holy Spirit is prompting you, it's time to change jobs. But you are comfortable. You feel secured in this job. And they are not promoting you. They are bypassing you. You train people and then they become your boss. You don't even know what, what to call them. Boss trainee or trainee boss. You don't know. So sometimes all you need for God to bless you is for you to just change jobs. Do move. Amen. Move. Then we also talk about the fact that sometimes it means you have to stay for God to bless you. Because as Abraham, when there was farming, God told him to move. And when there was farming in the life of his son Isaac, his reference was what happened to his dad. When there was farming, he moved. He was getting ready to move and God says, no, you stay in this same place, in the farming, and I'll bless you. Amen. And when he stayed, he didn't just stay because God said, oh, well, God appeared to me and said, I should stay. So, Lord, I've stayed. He stayed, and in the midst of the drought, he still went ahead to sow, which in a way doesn't make sense because when there is that kind of drought that causes people to move out of nations, in your normal thinking, you won't take a cone and put it in the earth that is dry. You know there is no water coming. The earth looks like stone. And you take the corn and put it inside. That is faith. So he stayed and he sold. And then God blessed him. Sometimes you may need to stay and sow to yourself. Because you know you are not doing a good job in that place. You need to develop yourself. Your skills are five years ago. There has been different updates of the software. Every time somebody has to help you, or oh, can you show me how to do this? Stay and develop yourself. And when you have developed yourself, God will also give you an increase. Amen. We also talked about the fact that God will bless you through the evening and the morning seed. Ecclesiastes 11 verse 6. Ecclesiastes 11 verse 6 says that in the morning sow thy seed and in the evening withhold not thine hand for thou knowest not whether shall prosper either this or that or whether they shall be alike good. Amen. Because we don't know what which one would work the Bible is teaching us to sow in the morning and sow in the evening. And I was breaking it down that the morning may be the time you sowed into a certain profession. But God can use something that is not in your profession to bless you. You are trained as an accountant, but it is not working. But if you can sow in the evening and move into something else, may be connected to accounting, but not the traditional accountant. It, all of a sudden, you say that God, God is blessing you. Amen. So sometimes, be flexible and willing to learn new things and adapt. Yes, the morning you sowed, you went to school, you became this. But in this season of life, maybe God will bless you in another way. And God is waiting for you to make a move, take a course, Upgrade yourself. That's all because I went to school to learn this. This is what I have to do. That inflexibility stops God from being able to bless you. Amen. I was trained as a civil engineer, but I don't use civil engineering anymore. It doesn't buy me bread. Something else buys me bread. And if I had stayed in civil engineering, I'll still get a job. I don't think it will pay me as this new job is paying me. And I'll feel like, oh, God has not been faithful. I've served you. I've been pastoring the church. But I don't really see some blessings in my life. Because he didn't move. God is probably to move. Do something new. Amen. So be open. 
be willing to explore. Be willing to learn new things. Says that in the morning sow thy seed, and in the evening don't withhold thy hand. Amen. Jesus is a perfect example. In Mark chapter 6, when he went to his hometown and they insulted him, they said, is this not the carpenter? The, uh, uh, is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary? So he was new by him. He was known by his profession. Just like some people may know you that you are a, you are a nurse. Is that not a nurse? Is that not an engineer? People know him or knew him by the profession. That means that he actually worked as a carpenter. It's not that his father was a carpenter and is a carpenter son, like some people in some countries. What your father do becomes your name. <laughs> but this one, he was known. He had worked as a carpenter. He had made money as a carpenter. But in another phase of his life, in Luke chapter 8 from verse 1 to 3, the Bible says that he was, uh, what's the word? He was sustained by the women who were around him. Joanna, the wife of Chusa, Susanna, and Mary Magdalene. They ministered to him. They sustained him. He was no longer working as a carpenter. Although he is trained as a carpenter, he was depending on these people because it was a different phase of life. And you may have been, you may have entered a phase of life where your training wouldn't work. And God wants you to move and do some things. These days, people don't go to school for four years. I mean, the four-year university degree, don't get me wrong, it's important. But if you have a university degree already, a lot of learning is becoming outmoded. There's a lot of things you can add on by certificates, taking a quick course. That is what people are looking for. They just want to know that, yeah, you can do the job. And suddenly, things open up for you. Amen. You also look at God will bless you through your parents. God will bless you through your parents. Isaac, the son of um, Abraham. Genesis 25, verse 1 to 6. I'll go to verse, uh, the same 25 from verse 5, just 5 and 6. No, from 1 to 6, 5 and 6. So, and Abraham gave all he had unto Isaac, but unto the sons of the concubines which Abraham had, Abraham gave gifts. So all that he had, he gave to Isaac. He woke up one day and suddenly he was rich. So your father can be a blessing to you. Your mother can be a blessing to you. Amen. And I was explaining that they may not have material stuff to give you, but they can bless you with their words. Because in the life of Jacob and Esau, Esau was the one who got the material possession because Jacob ran away from home empty-handed. But Isaac actually made a statement that I have sustained him with corn and wine by my words. And truly he became greater than Esau. Who actually had all the gold, the farms and things that Isaac had. The, the, the gold, all the things he inherited from Abraham. And the ones he added on in his own life. He went to Esau. Jacob went away with nothing, just the words. And Isaac said, I have sustained him by my words. With corn and wine I have sustained him. And truly he became the greater. Amen. So learn to cultivate the relationship with your parents because a, a blessing can come from them. And you don't know how it changes your life. But over time, you see that it has worked. Amen. Amen. God will bless you through your job. Genesis 30, 27 to 28. Laban said, if I have found favor in your sight, I have learned by divination that the Lord has blessed me because of you. Name your wages and I will give it. Appoint me thy wages and I will give it. Amen. God blessed Jacob through his job. But his father was blessed through inheritance. So God can use different ways to bless you. Amen. So be open. 
Maybe your father may not have anything to give you, or your, your parents may not give you something, but God can still bless you through your job. So don't fight your parents because they didn't give you anything. Because God can bless you as you blessed Jacob. And somebody will tell you, name your price and we'll pay it. Amen. Amen. Last, we talked about uh, being your association with someone. Laban said, I have found favor, brother, and I have learned by divination that the Lord had blessed me because of you, had blessed me for thy sake. So associating with certain people can lead to blessings. Amen. And I was explaining that look at our Father. It's clear that the grace of God is on his life. And I would encourage you to associate with him. He may be in Ghana. How do you associate with him? Be involved in the things that God is leading him to do. He feels led by God to build churches, building 500 churches. Right now, we've built almost 300 and something. We are getting to 400. A church is about $10,000. There are people who could associate with the, what, work, what God is doing. And a blessing comes into your life. Associate with healing Jesus. Maybe you can give something monthly. The first time you sign up for $10 a month. But you can associate more. Increase it. And work and connect. Because in the life of David, at the beginning, the Bible says that all the people that came to him, 1 Samuel 22, verse 1 to 2, David therefore departed thence and escaped to the cave Adullam. And when his brethren and all his father's house heard it, they went down thither to him. Everyone that was in distress, note the people who came to him. Everyone that was in distress, everyone that was in debt, they are being chased by collectors, credit card people. <laughs> everyone that was discontented, gathered themselves unto him and he became captain over them. He was captain over over straw. People without much. That was where he started. He didn't have warriors. Because Bible would have said, oh, and all the warriors came to David. But the people that came to him were people in distress. People in debt. People who were discontented with life. But then, go down a few chapters. 2 Samuel 23, verse 8. 2 Samuel 23, verse 8. 2 Samuel, 2 Samuel, as some people say. 2 Samuel 23, verse 8. says that these be the names of the mighty men whom David had. Where did they come from? They had been transformed by association. Just by being with David, something had changed in their lives. Amen. Amen. He had mighty men. And that whole chapter talks about the, their fame, some of the things they did. Those who slew giants, those who jumped into caves, into peace to go and kill a lion. Mighty works. But at the beginning, there were distressed people, discontented people, and people in debt. So association can lead to a change in life. Amen. And God can bless you through that. Amen. That's where we ended last week. Let's go on to what we want to talk about today on the same topic. God will bless you through miracles. I need you to believe it. Believe all these things and write it down because when it happens you need to say, oh, this is how God has blessed me. Or sometimes you will be going through a process and so this is one of the ways that God uses to bless. Amen. God will bless you through miracles. Exodus 12, verse 35. Exodus 12, verse 35. And the children of Israel did according to the word of Moses. And they borrowed of the Egyptians jewels of silver, jewels of gold, and raiment. Amen. Let's jump to Exodus 14, 26 to 31. 
Exodus 14, 26 to 34. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand over the sea, that the waters may come again upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots, and upon their horsemen. And Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to his strength when the morning appeared. And the Egyptians fled against it, and the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. And the waters returned and covered their chariots, and the horsemen and all the host of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them, there remained not so much of them. Amen. We don't need to go on. I think it's okay here. Now, the two scriptures, watch it. In the first one, they said that they did according to what Moses told them. And they borrowed from the Egyptians. There's a sound. They borrowed from the Egyptians jewels of gold, silver, and, and the rest. Amen. Now, they borrowed it. It wasn't given to them for free. That means that they were to return it. I mean, if you borrow something from me, it doesn't belong to you. Like you borrow my car to go grocery shopping. Yes, certainly my car belongs to you. You borrowed it. What you borrow, you retain. Amen. Amen. But then God killed the Egyptians. So there are no more owners. <laughs> There's nobody to retain the things to. And he has separated and put a sea between them. And that is the miracle I'm talking about. How is it going to happen in your life? <laughs> People are beginning to kill their... <laughs> you have got to owe somebody want to kill the person. <laughs> how, how is this going to happen in your life? You see, what really happened in their life then is that they found themselves in a certain situation. All of a sudden, the, the, the situation changed and it favored them. And you would find yourself in some situations. Some decisions will be made somewhere, somehow. And the outcome is that it favors you. And that is a miracle. You may not know how it happens, who is making the decision. But you would wake up one day and say, oh, the decision has been made. And the result is that it has favored you and it has advanced you and it has prospered you. Amen. That is a miracle that God can give to you. Amen. Amen. As he made for the Egyptians. Because God, borrow. When you borrow, you return. But now, there's nobody to return to. Amen. Amen. May you get such a miracle Amen. that a situation will favor you. Things will turn around suddenly and you'll be better off in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Let me show you another miracle. First Kings 17, 25 to 15. First Kings 17, 25 to 1 Kings 17, 12 to 15. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. <laughs> what a, a situation. When you know that this one I'm eating to die, after that, that is it. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not. Go and do as thou hast said. But make me thereof a little cake first. Somebody tells you that, look, this is all I have. And I'm telling you before God and man that this one, my whole plan is we eat it and we die. I said, no problem. Go and make the cake. But make it for me first. I mean, what sort of wicked pastor is that? And bring it to me. And after, make for thee and thy son. 
For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail, until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. She went and did according to the saying of Elijah, and she and he and her house did eat many days. Amen. Amen. There is a miracle in store for people who selflessly take care of God's people. Even putting them ahead of, putting God's servants ahead of themselves is a miracle for such people. That God would ensure that the oil would never run out and the flower will never get finished. Amen. Amen. It is one of the ways that God blesses people. And it's a decision you could take that I support men of God. And this blessing which he had, you qualify for it. Amen. Amen. That is another miracle. Another miracle I want to show you is 2 Kings 4, 1 to 7. 2 Kings 4, 1 to 7. Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead. And thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord. And the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be born men. And Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me, what hast thou in the house? And she said, Thine handmaid had not anything in the house, save a pot of oil. Then he said, Go, borrow thee vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels. Borrow not a few. And when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons, and shall pour out into all those vessels, and thou shalt set aside that which is full. So she went from him and shut the door upon her and upon her sons, who brought the vessels to her, and she poured out. And it came to pass, when the vessels were full, that she said unto her son, Bring me yet a vessel. And he said, There is not a vessel more. And the oil stayed. Amen. That is a great miracle. But what is the lesson here? So this woman was the wife of one of the sons of the prophet. And she testified that you know, verse 1 says that you know that my, my give me verse 1, I want to Thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord. He was a serious student. Somebody who lived a righteous life. Son of the prophet. But he was in debt. But he never went to consult the prophet. For himself. He never opened up to the prophet. That look, things are bad. I'm owing the whole town. He never said it. It may be his pride. There are people who never open up. They always want to present the polished face. Oh yeah, I'm good and high, blessed and highly favored. Like there's no issue. But there is a prophet right by them. A servant of God by them. Who could change things by praying? But he never consulted. But the wife said, no, I'm not, I'm not sitting here. Today. I have seen God use this man. So when he died, she went to consult the prophet. So his poverty during his life could have been averted if he had gone to consult the prophet. You say what? Maybe the poverty killed him. Yeah. Sometimes all it takes is be open and lessen your pride. So if you think of a servant of God as all, Charlie, 
we are equal, we can all pray. You know, the business where I pray. I've even seen people, they had issues. And I went there to pray for them and was praying for them. When the thing turned around, come back and give a testimony and say that. Pastor came and prayed and we were all praying. When I said, I stood in my hey, sir, I, I wasted my time. I should have stayed home. I didn't know you were praying. It's a certain mindset that equalizes the power on the man of God. Oh, that he came to pray and we were all praying and then God turned the things around. So you, you equalize and you nullify it. And this man, he didn't need to die poor. Because the day the wife went to consult the prophet, there was a solution. So why, 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 why was there a creditor coming to take his children away? When he was a son, a son of the prophet, he met him every day. He walked there with him. He was there every day, but he never opened up to say that, look, I, I, I'm struggling. Sometimes opening up is a key. Amen. Because he may pray for you then. Or another time, God may just say, no, it's time to pray for this person. Amen. Amen. So it is one of the miracles that you can have. Just opening up and let, I don't know how to say it, let, lessen your, your, your privacy rules and privacy laws. Amen. Do you understand my message? What did the wife see that he didn't see? Even though he was there all this while, training with the prophet, an assistant, but yet he won't say that, look, I need help. But the miracle is for people who open up. Not because the man is powerful, but the man is the representative of God. And perhaps when he prays, God will hear him. Amen. The wife tried it. And the miracle worked for her. Amen. Amen. Next way God will provide for you is through your enemies. Those of you. <laughs> it's through your enemies. Your haters. <clears throat> Let's go to Genesis 37, verse 4. And then we'll also do the same chapter 26 to 28. Why well, are you understanding my message? Genesis yeah, 37, verse 4. And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him. I could not speak peaceably unto you. Some people hate you because the grace of God is on you. They just hate you for no reason. They hated you for no reason because his father loved him. Amen. Amen. Verse 26 to 28. So, yeah. And Judah said unto his brethren, What profit is it if we slay our brother and conceal his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites and let not our hand be upon him for he is our brother in our flesh and his brethren were content. Then there passed by Midianites merchantmen and they drew and lifted up Joseph out of the pit and sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver and they brought Joseph into Egypt. Amen. So, you see, God, in God's agenda for Joseph, he would 
provide for him. He will bless him. He will become the prime minister of Egypt. The most important person in the world after Pharaoh at that time. Amen. Amen. Joseph was just about 16, 17 years. But for that to happen, it's not going to happen in Canaan or wherever they were. It needs to happen in Egypt. God needed Joseph to be in Egypt. If God told Joseph, he probably wouldn't have gone. He was probably too small to take the journey by himself. So now, God used his haters to pay for the journey to Egypt. Free transportation. They gave him to the merchant men who took Joseph to Egypt because God needed Joseph to be in Egypt. That is how the blessing will be, uh, will be, will be fulfilled. That is why when his brethren came to see him, those of you uh, shepherds, you should give me the scripture. When his brothers came to see him and they were afraid, he told them that, no, don't worry. Come, come close. Don't, don't be afraid. It was not you who sent me hither, but it was God. What scripture is that? I know it's in Genesis. I don't think it's 49. 49, 25 is not. It's the blessings of. He said, it was not you who sent me. But it was God who had sent me. The enemies thought they had him. They thought they were, they were destroying him. God said, no, you are not destroying him. I'm just using you for passage. You just became hired. Hired without pay to transport him to his destiny. destiny. So, there is something that an enemy can give you that a friend cannot give you. An enemy can cause you to mature quickly. That's if you hang out around your friends, you may not mature. <laughs> an enemy can inspire you to become someone that your friends cannot inspire you to become. That is why you shouldn't worry too much when you have enemies. Because guess what? David even said that God will lay a table before you in the presence of your enemies. That's why when, when there are no enemies, there is no table. So you need one or two so that you can tell God that, look, when is the table? When, when, when is it happening? I need one or two. Because you are not so worried about a table in front of your enemies. You are worried about what is on the table. It is your blessing. And if it needs one or two enemies for that to happen, don't worry, you stay. But God, so God will use your enemies. They will think they are destroying you. But God is using them. Before they realize, they've pushed you to your destiny. That is why when they crucified uh, Jesus, the Bible says that if they had known, if they had known, they would not have touched him. They thought, oh, let's kill him and finish the God's agenda. But when they did that, and then they realized that, no, it is leading to glory. Said, man, we made a mistake. And that is what your enemies will say. They say, if we had known, we'd have loved this guy. We'd have loved this guy. Amen. God will bless you through your enemies. God will bless you through your enemies. And your enemies will give you things that your friends cannot give you. When enemies bring difficulty and pain into your life, take the lesson and become better. Because enemies are God's accelerated schools. You know there's accelerated nursing, right? There's normal nursing. And you also have accelerated nursing. One and a half years you finish, I think. And there's one that maybe four years or so or two years, you are still going. Yes. An enemy will enroll you in God's accelerated academy. And you will learn things quickly. By the time you come out, you have developed. Amen. Amen. 
that is a, a way God can bless you. Amen. Amen. Think of David. When he was alone in the wilderness and he was, his life was being threatened by lions and bear. He had to learn to fight. He was a young guy, maybe 16, 17. And he had seven other brothers who were older than him. I don't know how his father sent the youngest boy into the wilderness in the night to face lions and bears when older men are sitting in the house. Maybe he wasn't loved. Because even when Samuel came to to anoint the son of Jesse, Jesse forgot that he had a son in the wilderness. So he was a nobody in the house. All those circumstances were like enemies, but that thing trained him. The day God's moment arrived, and um, first somewhere, wait, let me see, 1725. First Samuel 17, 25. All the, all the things that those circumstances, those unfortunate circumstances had trained him for, it was training him for these days. And the men of Israel said, have you seen this man that is come up? Surely to defy Israel is he come up. And it shall be that the man who, who killed him, the king will enrich him with great riches. David said, wait. Say so what? If I kill this one, great riches, the king will give him his daughter to wait, the one I've been spying all these days. And the king will make his father's house free, no taxes. He said that my God has prepared me in the wilderness. Today, today, today is my day. How did it happen? How did he get a confidence? What made him even think he could face Goliath? The accelerated school. All the things that the enemies brought him, trained him for that day. And your enemies are preparing you for the day of your outdooring. Amen. So don't always pray to kill your enemies. Leave them. Leave a few. Some must die, but leave a few. God will bless you through your gift. Proverbs 18, verse 16. God will bless you through your gift. A man's gift maketh room for him and bringeth him before great men. Amen. Everybody has been given a gift. I think one of the things we don't try well as people and parents of African descent is to help our children tap into the gift. Because all we know is you need to go to school, pass your exam, and become a doctor or a lawyer. But maybe the gift is different. The gift may be sports. But you must become a doctor. What, what are you doing sports for? Or maybe the gift is an art which is going to become big in future. Writing, anything. The gift is a source of provision. It says that a man's gift maketh room for him. The same way, you have a gift that God has given you. Can you identify the gift and use it? If you do that, it will lead to great provisions for your life. Amen. The next way God will provide for you is through the kindness of another person. Kindness of another person. Ruth chapter 2 verse 15 to 17. Do you know where Ruth is? Hmm. Ruth chapter 2 verse 15 to 17. And when she was risen to glean, Boaz commanded his young men saying, 
let her glean even among the sheep and reproach her not and let fall some handfuls of peppers for her and leave them that she may glean and rebuke her not. Amen. So sometimes at certain seasons of life, the only way God will provide for you is through somebody's kindness. But oftentimes, our own pride stops us from being able to accept help. You don't need to do everything by yourself. Sometimes God will send someone who will take care of certain things for you at certain times. And if you can relax and allow God to work, things will be better. But many people struggle and suffer because they cannot just relax and accept help when they need help. You don't want people to know your business. You don't want people to know your story. All those privacy laws, <laughs> privacy laws you have, may be stopping God from helping you. No, look at the scripture. Go back to you. Not the, 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 this one. What did Boaz tell the people? And let also some handfuls of peppers. Purposefully leave handfuls there for her to find. And that was taking care of Ruth. Somebody's kindness intentional, leave handfuls there on purpose, just leave it there so that she finds it. And that may be what God will use to take care of you. So when you go through a phase of life, and it seems like the only way to make it or for life to be better is to take help from someone. Be open, because that may be how God is going to take care of you in that moment. It may not be all always but in that moment that may be how God is going to take care of you amen. amen if you can just like I say relax your privacy loss don't be too proud to accept help God uses help or helpers amen. amen and the last one through kindness you've shown someone in the past True kindness you show someone in the past. Ruth chapter 4, verse chapter 2, 4 to 11. Ruth chapter 2, 4 to 11. So, whenever you have the opportunity to help someone, do it. If you have the opportunity to be kind to someone, be kind. Because God takes note of it. And you see in this scripture, Ruth came from Moab. Moab was a land that God himself cursed. She followed Naomi without any guaranteed prospects of uh, a good life. So MB uh, of a good she just decided to follow them. Naomi was old, all her sons had died. She was returning to Bethlehem because it was her country. But not because she had some investment there. She felt it would be better for me to be amongst my people. So when Ruth was following her to Bethlehem, there was no agreement. There was no pay. There was no insurance benefit. She just looked at because she had three sons, all the other daughters-in-law. They looked at the situation and said, no, this is where we end. Thank you very much. And they decided to stay in Moab because things looked better. How am I going to follow this woman? When I don't know how I'm going to take care of myself, but Ruth looked at the woman and said, no, this is an old woman. I cannot leave her. That kindness changed her life. And behold, Boaz came from Bethlehem and said unto the reapers, The Lord be with you. And they answered him, The Lord bless thee. 
Then Boaz said unto his servant that was set over the reapers, Whose damsel is this? May God cause you to be noticed. So the kindness is now beginning to work. It's bringing recognition. Don't worry if you're a guy. They won't call you damsel. <laughs> but if you're a guy, they'll call you damsel too. It's a problem. <laughs> Amen. Look. Yeah, at that time, if all the girls in town were there, everybody would have loved to marry Boaz. He was an eligible bachelor. A young, rich, up-and-coming guy. He had farms and people were working. That's what he said. He told his servants, who is this? And he came from somewhere. So he had other businesses. He's not in one place. He was a tycoon in the making. And the servant that was set over the reapers, even he had a servant who was in charge of people, said, it is the Moabitish damsel that came back with Naomi out of the country of Moab. And she said, I pray thee, let me glean and gather after the reapers among the sheaves. So she came and had continued uh, even from morning until now that she tarried a little in the house. Then Boaz said unto Ruth, Here is thou, thou not, my daughter, go not to glean in another field, neither go from hence, but abide here fast by my maidens. Let thine eyes be on the field that they do reap, and go after them. Have I not charged the young men that they shall not touch thee? And when thou art at first at test, go unto the vessels and drink of that which the young men have drunk. Then she fell on her face and bowed herself to the ground and said, Why have I found favor? Why have I found grace in thy eyes that thou should take knowledge of me? See, I'm a stranger. Now see, Boaz, his answer said. And Boaz answered and said unto her, It had fully been showed me all that thou hast done unto thy mother-in-law since the death of thine husband and how thou hast left thy father and thy mother and come in the land of thy nativity and had come into a people which thou knowest not here to fall. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So Boaz is saying that, look, the reason I'm showing you kindness is because I have heard all the things you have done for this old woman. How you left your own people. How you followed her. How you have stayed by her. You fetch water for her. You help her because she's old. She cannot do things for herself. You are a young girl who could be in town by this time. Being blown and blowing. But you have decided to stay with this old woman. And because of that... I am going to bless you. And if you go to verse 4, verse 13, chapter 4, verse 13, I think, eventually, and Boaz took Ruth, and she was his wife. And when he went in unto her, the Lord gave her conception, and she bare a son. She came from a land of cursed people. So she also had a curse on her. Because Moab was cursed. But kindness changed the curse into a blessing. And she's right in the line of David, Solomon, Jesus. She's a great, great grandmother of Jesus. And she only got there because she was kind. She decided to help. I said, your kindness can be a door for God to greatly provide for you. When you have the opportunity to help someone, help. Amen. Amen. Because God will notice it. Amen. Amen. Somebody will ask, who is this 
damsel. And the day that question is asked, you are close to your blessing. I hope you've been blessed. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word to us. Speak to us, Lord, not just here, but continue even from after here, over time. Minister to us, open our eyes to the truth in your word that our lives can be transformed. May we see how you have provided for us, Lord. May we be able to walk and stay in your divine provision for our lives, Lord. We thank you. We shall not want because you are our shepherd. And maybe you are here or you are watching us on social media. I just saw the video. The first thing is to know Jesus, to give your life to Jesus. Without Jesus, all these things will not happen. Jesus is the key. God sent him to die for you and for me. And I want to give you the opportunity to give your life to Jesus. The Bible says that you must confess him as your Lord and Savior. And you must believe in your heart that God sent him to die for you. When you do this, God saves you. It's a miracle in itself. God changes you and saves you. So we are going to say a prayer. If you want to give your life to Jesus, say it genuinely with all seriousness. Because that is how to be saved. Believe in your heart that God sent Jesus to die for you. And confess him as your Lord and Savior. So let's pray. Heavenly Father. Thank you for sending Jesus to die on the cross for me. I accept the free gift of salvation. Come into my life. Be my Lord and my Savior. From this day, I belong to you, Jesus. Write my name in the book of life. Thank you for saving me. Amen. If you said that prayer, you are saved. There's a, a number coming on your screen, 470-377-2963. Call the number, text the number. Someone is going to respond and get back in touch with you. We also have a book, a free gift we would like to give you. It's called Key Facts for New Believers. Amen. It's free. You don't have to pay anything. Just let us know and we'll send you a copy. Amen. God bless you for listening to this message. Subscribe to Kodesh Atlanta on Facebook and YouTube or reach out to us by calling or texting the number plus one four seven zero three seven seven two nine six three for more information and upcoming events. Thank you and stay blessed.